Hi, welcome to the second lesson of this workshop. I'm Jordan Rhodes, and today I'll be showing a demo of how I painted this portrait in watercolor. Just to start, I started off drawing the portrait in pencil freehand on just a piece of copy paper. Um, and then on the back of it, I just colored over with um, graphite and then used it in order to transfer onto a sheet of paper. Basically, so I only have to draw the sketch one time and um, it's easier to draw on copy paper versus this watercolor paper, which can have some texture. Um, in terms of the paper I'm using, I'll be using Strathmore 500, 500 series Gemini watercolor paper. Um, 300 GSM cold press. I'll be using brushes from uh, Princeton, a couple of them, a few round brushes, a size 12 and a size 8, a size 2, uh, a rigger brush, size 8, um, a flat brush, half inch, and then a half inch angle brush. And in terms of the paint, I'll be using my Mary Blue 36 watercolor set. Um, I'm not gonna be using all of the colors. I'll try to, I'll make sure to show the palette as I'm going and um, call them out, but um, yeah. Other than that, let's get started. So to start, I like to begin just wetting the paper. So I'll be using this size 12 Princeton brush. Get it nice and wet and ready to go. And just a little bit, of, just a bit of water to wet the surface of the paper. Now that it's wet, I like to go in with a base color. So I'm gonna go with a sky blue color. Um, this is a cerulean sky blue. So I'm mixing a little puddle here now. Watercolor is nice because it's uh, a little bit goes a long, a long way, so um, this is pretty dilute. And while I'm doing this, I'm thinking about the values at the same time. So, like, the hair is gonna be one of the darkest values on this portrait. Um, the forehead the light appears to be coming in from this direction so all the highlights are around here with watercolor it's very important that you save the white of the paper for your highlights because since it's since it's a transparent medium the light the light comes from the white of the paper but I don't want it to be complete completely white either because later on it will kind of it will throw off the contrast a bit if it's completely white. So I'll leave it a little bit uh, dilute. So 
as I'm painting this, I'm, I'm keeping in mind to preserve the white, uh, preserve the highlights. So keep the areas that, uh, watercolor takes a bit more planning than gouache. Uh, you, you really have to work hard at establishing those highlights and maintaining them throughout the process. this a second to dry um, so that I can move on to the next layering step. After that base layer is dried, I went in with a Princeton round brush, a size 8 brush. Um, basically, it's a round brush, and that holds a good amount of water. Um, and I'm just painting in the colors that I'm seeing. Starting with burnt sienna. color color shift so I'm gonna add some of this quinacrinone uh, quinacrinone uh, lake it's a little bit too much watercolor there's often stages where it looks good and then stages where it's like the ugly stage um but it's important just to just to keep on going and have faith in the process Now I'm gonna 
while while this area dries I'm gonna switch over and start working on the hair a little bit um, with watercolor you have to it's good to be strategic and jump around based on what areas are dry or not um, for the hair I want to mix a very dark greenish color so I'm gonna mix this color uh, called Kubrick Green Deep. It's a very, it's a very uh, staining green. It's, it's a nice green. I like it. And I'm gonna mix it with this beautiful brown color called um, Dragon's Blood. It's basically, it's basically a um, a brownish green. A brown, sorry, a brownish red. And when it uh, mixes with that green color, it makes a very nice dark. Very nice dark color. So I'm gonna take that and then go in and start adding it to the hair. It will take a few layers in order to darken it to the point that I would like, but this is a good start. to dry some more. When the paper is wet, it will make it easier. It will spread out rather than stay in place where I intended it to go. So. develop where I might not necessarily want them. Um, so you can soften them by just going in with a brush full of clean water. Alright, so I think I'm gonna give this a chance to dry just to see where we are. So it's been about 10 minutes and now I am going back in with a half inch stroke brush. I switched to this flat brush because I wanted to get more blocky um, fields of color. Just That's just my personal style. some of those some of those highlights the, the white of the paper is a little too white and making the contrast a little bit too high Now 
now I switched over to a size 2 round brush Prince and Neptune um, so that I can get in smaller details. Thank you. 
this point the paint I'm uh, just finalizing I like I like to have like hard edges on my like harder edges geometric shapes this is my personal uh, personal taste like I'm not making too much of a difference anymore and I think that's about at that point right now so uh, actually I'll just add a few details to hint at the shirt and a little bit of a background and then wrap it up final piece um thank you so much for watching and i hope it was helpful in the next lesson i'll be going over my basics in gouache so see you next time <laughs>